On this episode of the New Marketing Podcast, we're gonna discuss business models and not locking yourself into old ways of thinking. Welcome to the weekly Neo Marketing Podcast, featuring one half of the Golden Group C-Suite, Kyle Golding, and Prince Pritchard, APR, PRSA Fellow. Hey, Pritch, how are you today? Doing great, Kyle. How about yourself? Fantastic. Interesting I subject have, today. I do. I want to revisit something we've talked yeah. about in the past. Uh, a, I have some new thoughts on it. And B, I think some people, uh, a lot more people are listening to the podcast and watching the videos now than when we did this originally. So... A, every business is based on a business model, right? right? There's B2B, business to business, there's business to consumers, there's retail, there's wholesale, there's all, all these things that anyone running a business understands, right? Right. The problem is too many people get trapped in old, traditional, how we've always done it business models. Yeah, big the mistake. World, the world's changing. Yeah. Well, I think you would agree with that, right? Yeah, slightly. Uh, <laughs> yes, thanks to <laughs> things like uh, smartphones, tablets, computers, internet, social media, uh, 300 channels of cable, AR, streaming. AI. Yes, I mean, that's coming. Man. Right? Everything is changing. So the idea that we've done business this way for 50 years or 100 years or five years is yeah. well outdated these days. Yeah, and I'm glad you said that because things have changed so rapidly. Absolutely. That if you're doing what you did five years ago, you're already off the rails. Right now, all of the clients that we're working with that are finding great success have made great adaptions to how they do business to changing their business model and not simply just at the tactical level but all the way up the yeah, chain yeah. at their strategy yeah. because the tactics have changed. These things are circular and they inform each other. So the tactics are different because of the internet, because of smartphones, etc. They had to change their business overall approach. Those are the people having success. The people that are failing and the people that are not finding the right connection, the right audience, the right sales niche are the folks who are insisting on doing what they've always done. Yeah. So they've got concrete galoshes on. That's right. So here's a great example. Traditionally, if I told you, hey, we're going to have a TV show, you would think, oh, man, first of all, big time. There's nothing bigger than TV, which now the Internet is bigger than TV. <laughs> right. But you would think, OK, we're going to make a great TV show. And then we're going to sell the advertising space and then we'll get paid for every episode, for every ad that we can sell from the, and the price will be based on our audience viewership, right? Right. It's a real simple formula. Right. It's not like that anymore these days. Nope. And in fact, there are a lot of TV shows now, almost every reality show out there. Sure. They're making the production cost back on the ad revenue, but where the real money is, where people on these shows are getting rich are in creating their own personas and creating their own products around them. So it's not about getting paid X number of dollars an episode to be on a reality show. It's right. how many t-shirts, right. how many hats you could sell with your name and face on it, how, how many much appearance makeup. fees, right. yes. how many endorsement deals, appearance fees, how much people will pay you to do an Instagram or a Twitter post, a, a promoted post, right. because you're known from TV. So it's not about getting paid to be on TV, it's about being a known entity from TV and then parlaying that into online and other promotional avenues. Right where lots of opportunities are happening. Flip side is true, promoting. You would think that promotions would come from TV as being your biggest asset, but the internet has, has flipped that around too. So a lot of the favorite TV shows that I like to watch, huge range of type of TV shows from Game of Thrones and The Walking Dead uh, on Sunday uh, evenings, HBO and AMC, uh, CNBC's uh, The Prophet with Mark Limonis, Shark Tank, right. etc. These are all types of shows I watch, so I follow them on social media. They all do heavy, heavy social media promotion of their TV shows. They're using social media to drive audiences to turn on the TV and watch the shows. Right. And it's not the other way around. It's not a TV commercial to promote uh, a social media account. It's the other way around. Five years ago, 10 years ago, people would say you're crazy to say you would need a huge social media presence to across platforms to promote a TV show, especially on a major network like HBO. Right. These things have flipped. They've changed. Yeah. So if business owners, business decision makers truly want to be effective and efficient in 2018, 2019, 2020, if you haven't taken the top down look at your business plan, your business model, your audience, and then all the tactics that are available today right. and will become available relatively soon and how your competitors will be using them. If you haven't gone up to the top of that conversation 
and take pulled out the business plan and got after it and made the changes necessary to adapt to how people consume information and content now, you're missing huge opportunity. Potential. Absolutely, absolutely. And and the the logic that it takes a huge social media presence to pull that off is, is faulty logic because it that lends itself very well to word of mouth. You don't have to get to everybody in the audience. You get to one you've heard influencer marketing and there's lots of discussion we could do about that. <laughs> it's a but whole other show. Somebody, somebody says something to their friends and yes. they say something to their friends and it's like ripples in a, in a pond. Exactly, and so it's not the fact that, that these TV shows and other entities are using social media, it's how they're using, how they're social using media. it. They're doing that. They're creating shareable content that can move the needle, move conversations, get people to retweet, to send things to their friends, to ask questions. Uh, you know, the, the cliffhanger, the traditional cliffhanger on the TV show, right? <laughs> right? Well, there's more action after the show is over about discussion about what it could be, what it should right. be. Hey, uh, I, I, I'm finding the Easter eggs here and there, and we have this conversation for the whole week until we get to the next episode, right. creating momentum for the next episode. Engagement. You just didn't have in the past. Yeah, they're keeping everybody engaged. Absolutely. Yeah. And the opportunity for businesses at the same time is if you find a better way to create your own content, create engagement, and you talk about the numbers on social media, right? Here's the only metrics that means anything on social media. Listen to me, folks. Listen carefully. <laughs> the only metrics that means anything is conversion. Yep. How many people can you convert? You can have 100 million followers, but zero conversions is still zero. You can have 10 followers, but if they are retweeting, sharing, engaging, drawing other people to your product, and then acting on what it is you want them to do, yeah. buy, turn on your show, go to a website, etc. that conversion rate is success. Absolutely. So the key folks, don't think about business the way you've always thinking about it. And you might do a business plan review. You might look at everything top to bottom, engage the new tactics and still see you're on the right track, but you cannot assume what you've always done still works in 2018, 2019 and so on. So get that business plan out and do a scrub. There it is. Start with strategy, get into the minutia of it, do your additional research if you need to into what has changed or what's new because you have new competitors, new tactics, new opportunities, new things happening on a regular, new laws, new regulations, etc. We had net neutrality, now it's gone again. Back to where the, the internet was for the first 20 years of the internet. We had three years of net neutrality, now we're back to an open internet. Then the, the, the private market is gonna take care of that. We'll be fine, totally with that. <laughs> but these things change. You have to know right. these. New things are coming. You mentioned AI and VR and things of this nature. So new technology is happening. There will be new regulations and, and uh, things you'll have to think about from a business standpoint, legal and otherwise. How do you make money off of it? How do you ta pay taxes, etc. But don't assume what's working now will always work and is working at maximum level. Make a commitment to look at it, examine it, and make sure that you vet every piece of your process from the beginning statement of your mission statement through your tactics on a daily basis. Absolutely. Good advice. It sounds like a lot of work, folks, but it's worth it. And if you do it on the regular, you don't have to stop and bring in outside experts on a big, giant scale. Do it on the regular basis. Just don't sit back and assume your business plan is working for you all the time. That's our advice for today. Until next time, good luck. Ciao.